Hello everyone, so for the next stage of the video I'm just going to give you a bit of a walk round on the cab screen. I've been round to the base station, I've made sure it's all connected, everything's transmitting its uh, corrections, I've walked around the machine to make sure the cables and everything's all, in, uh, all intact. Um, I've installed the cab screen, I've just turned it on, I've got the engine on tick over and the safety lever up so I'm just going to give you a quick feel from what you should be seeing once your machine's fully up and running. Now I've got models in here as well so um, there's no need to do that. So let's get started. So TD520 is a tablet based screen um, and it runs the same way as what your iPad would with, with apps and you can see along the bottom here we've got apps loaded to it. Starting at the beginning we've got um, the Earthworks app, that's the main dig, dig screen. Then you've got the web interface which is like the back end and when they go on the TCC that's the remote access, they'll have access to that back end there. Plus when you want to add buckets um, and remove buckets you do it in the web interface not in the dig screen. Then you've got like uh, App Central which is just like an app store where you can download further Trimble apps, settings tab and then a file flipper. The file flipper is for when you upload models that might not be in the quite right format, it flips them to, to make sure that the screen can understand them. So starting with the Earthworks um, tablet, so this is the main screen that it comes to. Um, you've got sort of five boxes here, so let's start at the beginning. The first one you come to is, is basically which type of guidance you're going to be using. So on this one it says dual GNS or if you was to go with 2D or UTS left and right that's your total stations and your prisms um, but for this one we need to be in dual GNS and you can see when I've done the video on the corrections source for the base station I made a note of the, tran the, the frequency that it was transmitting on which is 458 8000 now you must make sure that both base station and cab screen are transmitting corrections across the same radio frequency and that's basically where you go to to do that so you can see here it's through the source its frequency um, and that's that one right so I'll cancel out of that one um, the next one is your system status so as you start the machine it tends to go through its own pre-start checks within, within itself um, and it'll check your boom sensor stick sensor attachments and so on all the way down um, and if you get any errors these green ones here will all turn red but if you look there if I give it a recheck you can see it goes from an explanation mark to a red to green usually when you first start your machine don't panic if the system ECM takes a while to start that one there usually lags a bit um, from my experience anyway and then once they're all green that's fine if one of them's red it could mean that the cables broke or it's not finding the sensor or something like that so always make sure um, so that's done next one we go to is your job setup so on this you can see I've got projects attached to it there's a few different projects there that we're working on for this one we're in the plant force demo area at the college um, and then the next one down is your modes so you've got depth and slope which is basically 2D um, you don't really need to have any sort of design models uploaded for that that's just if you want to go and do a flat surface or a batter somewhere you can use that one and then the last of all is the more complex infield design which means using your bucket as a rover to go and create your own model v-ditch or trench or something like that but for this process we're just going to keep it in design and then just apply. Next one over is your buckets so you can see that your buckets are there usually you'll have a drop down list of three or four buckets that you need or would have been calibrated with your machine. Um, if you're unsure about the buckets you can always take a tape measure to the bucket and you've got all the the, the widths and diameters, uh, diameters there for you to check. The focus point is obviously where you want to be on the centre of the bucket or the left or the right. Um, that's basically if you're up against a curb race or you anything like that and you need to guide to the left of the bucket or if you're on a trench and you want to uh, uh, guide to the centre of the bucket then that's where you would change all that. Uh, last of all you've got the licences 
which is your, it's not really much you can do about it if any of these have expired down here. Um, it's just making sure that they're all there. If they're red and they've expired, the only thing you can really do is either call us or call Trimble um, and usually we'll have to pay some money and get the, get the licenses re-enabled or back up to date. Um, and that can be done remotely if you've got a SIM card enabled. Um, and that's basically it. So if any of those are not correct or any there's errors on any one of them, this bar here will stay grey and it won't let you start it. But with this one, we're all up together. It's all up and running. So we just get ready to go straight to start. So you can see there, it's, this is the main work screen. You can see us, we're on a site there. This is our model of the college we've got here. Um, and you can see that's a section view of the machine in its current position, exactly how it's sat. If you want to scroll between the screens, just put two fingers on and it gives you different views and so on. Um, down this left hand side here you've got your height indicator of what you need to be and as you can see I'm on grade at the moment but if I just lift my bucket up make sure nobody's around you can see exactly where my bucket is not exactly on grade I think there's a little bit of a high spot there um, so then what you've got across the top here is just these are shortcuts again so you can see this one here is our model if I press and hold it, it should go to the back to the screen where we set up our model if I wanted to quickly change between models I can there um, the next two ones along are your offsets so you've got your center line offset and your height and elevation offset there um, say for example you just press and hold and I can add an offset go up or down depending on what the offset requires obviously down becomes a minus and up becomes a plus um, and if I want to add to them I can if I want a quick reference to it if I just tap it it should go to a preset offset 100 mil 500 mil and you can see there's a height elevation there as I change it um, and then the next one over here if you press that Oh. This basically is if you just want to customise the display, sometimes the machine gets in the way if you're looking at a model or something like that and you can just quickly remove it and just have the bucket on the screen um, or your centre lines, it gives you the cross hatches, I always recommend keeping them um, and that's that. Always have your cross hatches because it helps you line, you up, line yourself up on a trench, one of the hardest things is to uh, um, line yourself up on a good tr straight trench line and that's perfect with the crosshairs then along the bottom again this is customizable and it can sort of scroll off so you've got all your uh, your northings and your eastings and your elevations um, cut and fill values left and right side of the bucket um, but these are customizable I'll show you how to customize them in a minute along the bottom here you've got your focus points of your bucket or you've got store a point if you want to store a point obviously if you're plotting a trench or something like that I'll show you about that later on this one here you've got lane guidance which is where you can pick a line on the model to get to line to and then this one over here is your mapping which gives you a um, sort of as built pattern on the screen I'll just show you on another screen which uh, so you can see there so everywhere in red is above grade everywhere on green is bang on everything in blue is is low and that gives you a sort of a pass count and it shows you where you've been and where you've dug and that data can stay with the model as well so you can prove you've been somewhere and you've dug somewhere um, if you export the model either through the connected community at the end of the day or by USB B stick you can give that model to to the engineer so we can see where and what you've done it's a bit of a pr production uh, thing turn that off and turn it on 
So that's the main screen. As you go down to here, you've got your system settings, which is your, uh, again, your system status, your licenses. You can go and change all your layouts if you want your light bars slightly different. Again, I said about uh, adjusting your text ribbon at the bottom. If you want to add more data on there, you can. Um, backgrounds, overlays, uh, units, increments, grades, this is all sort of stuff you don't need to. Your file transfer there is for when you want to upload a model or download. You can see you can sync files with the connected community. You can import files to the machine. You can take it from the machine as well at the end of the day if you wanted to do that as well. Um, the rest of that you don't really want to be worrying about. On this side you've got your job sent up. Uh, some more offsets there. Quick quick buttons to your attachments and just basically everything we went through on the screen there um, for you to look at so we've you know so a couple of things on here is you've got your auto mode so for, I'll show you a video about engaging the auto modes later recording a point navigate to the point and measure mode and that's basically a bit of a walk round of the screen I'm going to do some more videos now focusing on each individual thing that you might need to do as in when. Thanks.